All right, welcome my friends. I'm so excited to introduce you to Mark Bunn. He is the author of Ancient Wisdom for Modern Health. And we are gonna to talk to you today about how finding your higher purpose can help you elevate your health and happiness. Welcome, Mark. I'm so happy to have you here. Dr. Nikki, absolute pleasure to be here with you and all your uh, listeners. Ah, good, good. So let's, uh, first of all, give us a little background on yourself, please. You've done quite an array of amazing things, including your transcendental meditation, which I'm so intrigued by, but you were also a professional football player. Give us the background. Yeah, well, I love speaking to Americans because uh, obviously, being familiar with gridiron, you know, you have padding, you know, so helmets and padding. In Australia, we have Australian rules football, which is very similar, but we don't we don't wear the padding. So we sort of get bragging rights here that we say we're, we're tougher than American uh, men and women, so we don't have the helmets and the padding. So I played professional sport for uh, about a decade. And in my very first year as a 19 year old, I got introduced to, as you say, transcendental meditation, which, uh, almost 30 years ago was a very strange concept to me, but I absolutely loved it. It was just a, a way to sort of escape the stress and the pressure of, you know, high performance and just get myself really centered. And it then sort of had byproducts into, you know, just, you know, business success and sort of having that sort of energy and clarity that we all want in our lives, whether we're parents or business people or whatever. So uh, that was the start of the journey. And then, yeah, I got into sort of health science and Western science and then uh, into the Eastern sciences and particularly Ayurvedic medicine, which is what I tend to uh, talk about mostly today. Nice. Can you give us a quick summary, if that's even possible, of what uh, Ayurvedic medicine, how it kind of differs and, and what are some of the common uh, thought processes in that world? Yeah, well, most people understand Ayurveda as what they call a science of life. But I like to look at it from a different perspective. And I get people to imagine years ago, a great scientist, whether it's Einstein or Isaac Newton or many of the great female philosophers that got glimpses into basically the fabrics of creation and what they call those aha moments that we all have in life. These little instances where we get this deeper understanding of what we call the laws of nature. At the fundamental level of the universe, there's these laws of nature that govern everything from the way the planets move around the sun to where a little baby's born to everything to do with our health and well-being. And so Ayurveda is that science, what they call the rishis. A rishi is a seer, someone who doesn't see through the eyes, but sees through the awareness of higher consciousness that they were at the same level of, as Einstein or Newton, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So in every moment, they were witnessing the birth of the creative expression, if you like, of life. And so Ayurveda is that record. It's both the written and the oral record of all those laws of nature that govern everything to do with herbs, to do with exercise, to do with body types, to do with relationships, and to do what, what we're gonna talk about today is dharma or higher purpose you know that that reason each of us are born and when we follow that path then everything flows i love that can you let's dive into that then now how do people find their higher purpose so many people are lost especially during these crazy wild times yes right so I, I believe that a lot of especially our society we're kind of put into a box of how our life is supposed to go we're pick this career for the rest of our lives, and maybe this relationship and get married, have babies. Um, but that may not be our higher purpose, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, and it's really good to acknowledge firstly that finding what Ayurveda or Vedic science would call our Dharma. Dharma comes from the word Dri, which is to uphold. It's like the foundation of our life. The analogy I use, it's like a river. When the river's flowing and it's strong, then everything the river nourishes is naturally um, fertilized and nourished. And so the way we find it is the exact opposite in many ways to what most people do is that we look outwards, you know, we look to the expert writing the latest book or the fashion magazine or, but of course all the great philosophers and all the enlightened saints throughout time have always told us that the secrets to life lie within. 
And so the challenge for most people is extracting themselves from their everyday, as you said, busy, frantic life, whether they're a parent or a businesswoman, whatever it is, and just getting that silence. So escaping from life where you can for a day or two days, you know, the health retreat, going out into nature. And if we can't do that, then traditionally what was done was meditation. And so in, for example, transcendental meditation, that word transcend means to go beyond. So we actually go beyond meditation. A lot of meditations today, they're all fantastic, but they're activities. You know, we have to think about, you know, the beautiful water, you know, on the meditation app, or we think of contemplate something. So the mind's still active, it's still thinking. To find our Dharma and our true purpose, we need to connect with that deep silence where there's no activity. It's like this, the bottom of the ocean rather than being at the top of the ocean where the waves are active and turbulent and agitated we need to take that dive deep down where those little insights those little messages from mother nature come to us and we all know they happen when we're in that science like archimedes in the bathtub you know that's famous story he's in the bathtub he's relaxing he's sort of almost daydreaming falling asleep and that's when the little insight about the whole formula of displacement of water comes into his mind so getting that silence meditating getting away from things and then traditionally what was also done if people are into this is astrology you know if you're into astrology or you have someone who's familiar with that then that can give a really good insight to what your dharma is and then the third level is just to do different things you know as we all advise people you know, if you're a drama teacher or a musician or an athlete, if you're one, very, very good at it. So we combine these two or three things. One is what we just are naturally good at. I get people to put a big white piece of paper on their wall with three columns. The first column is just what they love doing. So if someone they had a million dollars, they didn't have to work again, what would they love doing? I love writing. I love speaking. I love entertaining people. I love mathematics. I love whatever it is. Second column. What are you naturally good at? What would Nikki, Nikki, what would people say that you are just brilliant at? And you, from your side, you do it easily, you flow, time flies, you don't have to be paid to do it. It's just, you're just brilliant at it without trying. That's number two. And then what you do is you circle what's in both columns. So if playing the violin is something you're just naturally good at and you love doing it, it gets circled. If telling jokes and making people laugh is in both columns, you would circle that. And so that's the foundation of your Dharma. And then the third column is who? Who are you naturally drawn to helping? Because Dharma is service. You know, we're here, not just passion. We often think of passion in a Western sense. Follow your passion. Passion is half of the formula from a Vedic perspective. The other half is service. You know, that idea of serving other people. What unique role were you put on this planet by the divine creator, whoever that is, to do? And so do you just naturally have an affinity for high performing business people or with athletes or with single mothers or with the disadvantaged or with the homeless or young children? And that's that's your three. So you combine those three and just find what you can be really good at. And as Tim Ferriss would say, how can you not be replaced? If you can't be replaced by someone else, then that's a really good indicator that you're doing your, your Dharma. I love that. What a great tool. Thank you for those three. That's perfect. I mean, that will lead to such clarity for so many people. I love it. Thank you. Wonderful. So, and then that of course leads to your overall health because you're also happiness, you're in service, you, you don't feel like you're weighed down by this job because you love every moment of what you're doing because mm. you're in alignment with your purpose and passion. I love it. Wonderful. Are there yeah, that's right. tips in terms of the Ayurvedic chart and, and system of living healthier and happier? Yes. Well, um, the last chapter of my next book, which is a follow up to the ancient, first ancient wisdom for modern health book, the last chapter is called the tree of life and it's basically a visual representation of your exact question that 
we imagine each tree lying underground is the roots. So we can't actually see the roots with our eyes, but we know that nourishing the roots, as Maharshi Mahesh Yogi would say, we water the roots to enjoy the fruits. And so what we can't see, of course, is the spiritual consciousness. So that's where the meditation, the spiritual practices are primary. They're most important for happiness and health. And then the trunk of the tree is obviously the basis of all the branches and leaves and the flowers. So the trunk represents what we just discussed, our dharma, doing that activity, our vocation that serves others based on our natural talents and skill sets. And the second part of the trunk is our emotional health. The first chapter in the first book was to nourish the heart before we nourish the body. And you would know, Nikki, very well that you know many people today we think of health as, you know, good food, exercise, which are obviously very important. But we know unless the heart is nourished and happy, then we can eat the best food in the world and we still struggle to, to maintain good health. And so from there, we have all the different branches. So you can imagine eight or 10 or 12 branches coming out from the tree. And there are all our individual aspects of health, you know, good diet, exercise, environmental factors, in Ayurveda, what they call the daily and seasonal routines, um, which is, you know, that there's a daily flow to life. There's a certain time of day when we digest food the best. There's time to eliminate wastes, um, time to do creative pursuits more than others. So it's like riding a wave on the ocean. The surfer who catches the wave at the right time, it's enjoyable, it's blissful, it's fun. The surfer who tries to catch the wave at the wrong time, the wave comes down and crashes on their head. It's hard work, mouthful of water, bloody surfing, never gonna do this again. And Ayurveda says that life is exactly this. It's all timing. There's daily, monthly, seasonal, lifetime cycles that if we understand them and live in tune with them, that's where life flows. And that's, that's the beauty of it, yeah. Yeah, so it's, the Ayurvedic clock is one that's really fascinating to look up. I, I, I found it. And, and it's incredible how we go against it. And then we, we, our energy just drops, plummets when you're not in alignment with that clock. Correct. Yeah. So how can people find you? How can they buy your latest book? Yeah, so uh, Amazon is probably best uh, for the book, Ancient Wisdom for Modern Health. Uh, and then the second book will be out hopefully early next year, as well as another book on transcendence, what we discussed about this idea of transcending and TM. Uh, and all of that you can pre-order or contact at markbun, B-U-N-N, dot com dot A-U. Wonderful. And then your Instagram handle, are you gonna, do you do some yeah. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram is markbunhealth, markbunhealth. And obviously on the homepage of the website can get all the different social media links and uh, YouTube and everything. So um, there you go. Wonderful, Mark. Is there anything else that you wanted to share before we go? Just how much I love your energy, Dr. Nikki. And uh, I know you're doing great things for all your tribe and uh, getting the knowledge of health and wisdom out there. So thank you for having me and uh, look forward to connecting again soon. Ah, such a treat, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. And yes, I'd love to have you on anytime. Wonderful. Beautiful. Right. Thanks for tuning in.